Let's have a play with the 102 Scrawler Box. Hey Scrawlers, I'm Kat from Scrawler Box and I'm back with another video with the 102 Scrawler Box. And this time we're going to get into some of those tips and tricks as featured in this month's theme. Let's crack on. This month's supply featured for Viva watercolours of the metallic variety and inside this month's scene we've put together some tips and tricks on how to use them as well as some extra bits from our featured artist Paulina Zavodina. There's also a little bit behind the artwork in case you wanted to find out her inspiration. I'll be using the watercolour paper as provided inside the box and as we are doing watercolours you will need two pots of water, one for painting and one for keeping a brush clean. Also, you're going to need a palette, and anyone will do, I've got a plate. Also handy to have some tissue about. Let's get into it. I'll be starting with my initial sketch using the De La Rowney Water Soluble Graphite Pencil. Make sure your pencil is nice and sharp so you get some clean lines. I'm going for the fire part of this month's prompt, so keeping it literal by using the shades fire and lava. For the first layer we want a light wash. You can create a decent amount of tones with these paints by adding water and this is where that palette comes in handy. There is one on the back of the booklet but it's not quite big enough so if you wanted to add more water for larger areas like this a bigger palette does come in handy. The shimmer decreases the more water you add but the pigment still holds nice and strong. And now we have a super light layer for our first one and this is the beginning stages of a crystal. Let that dry completely and then we're going to go in for round two. By layering the same shade we can build tone gradually giving us a bit more control over the shadows. Another way to create shadows is to use the colour opposite in the colour wheel. So I've gone and picked the blue because that's the opposite to the orange and I'll mix that in to dull it down. It's more subtle than using a black or a dark grey. Onto the red and this time I'm not allowing that layer to dry, I'm going in while it's still wet. This way we will create some interesting bleeds and blooms with the paint. Adding in a tiny bit more shadow work, again not waiting for that layer to dry, we want it to blend out. Now we're going to let that completely dry again and I'll prep my palette while I wait, adding a little bit of gold to it this time. It's best not to close the booklet while those sheets are still wet, so I've placed my ruler to separate the pages to avoid them from pooling. That layer's dry, so now I wanted to show you how the pencil could be used on top of the paint. So once you've drawn the lines you want down, you can activate it with either more paint or water. Great for adding in some lovely texture. Activating it will also result in softer lines, so you're not left with any harsh dark areas. While it's still wet, we're going to dab in that gold and this will add in a nice granulation effect. And we'll let that layer dry again. While it dries, I'm just going to clean up any graphite left from the sketch with some clean water and dabbing with tissue. Now these paints wouldn't be shown in their full glory and justice if I didn't do a solid block, so that's what I'm going to do with the background. Let's put in some more graphite lines to clean up first, as I'm aiming for full metallic, no graphite involved. See how nice that cleans up. 
For the background colour, I've picked the same one as I used to do the shadows, as I know it will pop against that orange and red. And also, it has the gold undertone, so it won't be completely out of place. page wasn't completely dry so I'm not going to fill it in just yet. Instead I'll go back to doing some more graphite work with the pencil. This time I wanted to show you how it looked when it was dry and you don't activate it and you're left with a nice sketchy rough texture. Adding in more intense pops of red for added shimmer. Now we can paint in that background so I'm going to fill that in now using as little water as possible. We really want the metallics to come through on this. And then I'm adding little dots in because uh, that's the kind of person I am, I just can't help myself. The added visual interest just makes my brain happy. These colours are so vibrant this camera really does not do it justice, but you can still slightly see it there. The paints even look magical dried on the palette. I'm just going to add in more graphite just to show you how darkly it does layer over the paint. You can add any detail you want to once dry, the sharper the pencil, the finer the detail. With the option to activate if you feel like somewhere is too dark. I found a better angle to show you all that shimmery goodness. A moment to appreciate how magical this paint water looks. It's like potion from Harry Potter or something. And there we have it, some tips and tricks with the Bueno 2's Fall at Once. I love how shiny these paints are, but also at the same time, if you dilute them with a bit of water, you can get a nice flat colour. And that's it from me. I'll see you next time. Keep scrolling. Thanks again for watching, scrollers. Just remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more of our content. I'm off to eat that sweet now. Bye.